them. $1.6 million prize pool. I'm double checking to make sure they haven't changed any details since they told us last time. $1 million in US dollars for first prize. That is for the winner. $1 million for winning Dota. It's going to be huge. Dota2.com. The tournament tab is up to. Our website will actually change for the next 24 hours as well. So you guys can actually read all the details. The day I transformed into an adult was the day I started playing Dota. Sometimes like when you go up on the stage, you represent your country for something, you get the prize. It's the amount of uh, satisfaction and achievement that nothing else can give you. It's something I definitely not regret ever doing. Gaming is simply the proudest thing in my life. It can be called gamer, but for me, it's something different. One way to forget about pain is to do something that you will be in completely. So, computer games, for me, it was everything. This is my career I've chose to do it for so long. Success in my eyes is always based off on how other people see you. In the eyes of the public, and it's up to them. It's important to be doing things that you love and you really appreciate because that's your passion, man. You should you should really work for your passions. Yeah. Okay, guys, you have, you have seven minutes to set everything up, and then we go. This is the first time I really wanted to take something seriously and do something good for my life. Ten years ago, competitive gaming wasn't even really a thing. Uh, you would play for fun against your friends, maybe you would play for a cup of coffee or whatever you wanted. When I started playing, we've been fighting for 24 bottles of beer as the first place. I'm not joking. From there, though, online happened. And all of a sudden, you weren't just trying to be the best on your block. Now you're trying to be the best in the world. And that opened up competitive gaming to a whole new landscape. And one of the games really leading the way is Dota. Dota is sort of a combination of football and soccer for the Americans and chess. This is probably how I would try to explain Dota to someone who is not familiar with it. At least that's what I did to my parents. Dota is a game of momentum. You as five players try and battle against the other five players for momentum. Every single player controls one unit and the main objective of the game is to destroy the final enemy building, which is called the Ancient. Everything else that happens in the meantime is your amazing filler of a game. You could play 100 heroes in conjunction with 99 other heroes. It's just non-stop uh, possibilities and it's so much fun. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's like the same map every single time, but it literally never gets boring. I would say Dota is a way of life. When the prizes started coming, I was like, oh, well, we have like tournaments, so obviously some people is gonna come and say like, well, this is a great game, let's play it. Like, let's put money in it. And it started progressing each year. Those at the top level, they just do like lots of calculations in their head. Something like a beautiful mind, where you see like all kinds of things, and using all this information, make your next move. I see it in a lot of ways similar to basketball, just like a five on five game where you kind of have to work together and utilize each other's strengths and synergizing everything together. The teamwork and the trust and the sacrifice, uh, those are all true for every single team sport. Dota is a game that unites everybody. It doesn't matter what country you're from, what race you are. It's kind of like a bond that is shared. And when you're part of this tight-knit group of people, it's like having a second family. That's something you never let go. Everyone's searching for something. Fulfillment, 
fame, satisfaction. It gives you the ability to become someone else. A someone who is powerful, who can take down five opponents, express their creativity, break the rules without actually getting arrested. All of these reasons are in there somewhere. The player himself might not even know. He might not even understand it himself. But it's there. Gaming fulfills my competitive need. I'm a very competitive person. When it comes to sports, I consider gaming a sport, so I use my competitiveness and I fuel it with Dota, so that it fulfills that side of me completely. Fer is one of the best in America, if not the best. He has a lot of experience. He's one of the old hogs, basically, and he's generally just a calm guy, so in my opinion, that's a strength. Really good basketball player. I remember my coach was watching him play and just talk about Picking him up the next year when he came in always had nothing but good things to say, but he wasn't picked on the team, just the reason was, yeah, he just wasn't tall enough, I guess. So I know that yeah, he found the game, he got really devoted in that and stuff, and just found something else that worked. I was your typical parent. Clinton, you're spending too much time playing computer games. You need to go to school. You need to go to college. And he would tell me, I want to be able to play games and get paid for it. Now, he said this at a very young age before Dota ever came along. And I thought, well, you know, he's going to grow out of it. He's going to get sick and tired of sitting there in front of that computer and playing. Never did. Never did. In Singapore, uh, the families actually put a lot of stress on us in terms of our education. I would say it's been tough on me trying to juggle both studies and um, gaming at the same time. My grades have dropped for like two years already, and my parents have treated the gaming as a cause for it. I mean, there was this phrase that they used, said, uh, gaming would be the death of you one day. He's a great player and a great captain. I would say he's the top player in Singapore, yeah, easily. My parents and my, my family, they don't actually speak much of my gaming career. They don't tell their friends and my other relatives that I'm actually that good in my games. All along, they have only been bragging about my studies, because last night I used to be an A student. I like, go on and on, and, and it seemed like that was the only thing that they could ever be proud of. Actually, there was only been one person that has always been very supportive of me gaming, and that was uh, my ex-girlfriend, Hoyan. She's from the female Dota team in Singapore. There are a lot of things that we share in, in life, so many things. In my case, it felt really good, you know, to have someone who truly appreciated what you did best and loved you for it. She's aware of what I'm doing and, yeah, what I'm passionate about. The breakup was her decision and I respected it. We've been together for close to three years and ever since the breakup, uh, I haven't gotten out of it. I recall the last time she spoke to me, she, she named me as a bastard, so... Um, uh, <laughs> Well, you're yeah, not in contact anymore, yeah, but life goes on, yeah. I'm from Ukraine, my nickname is Lendy. I finished my university and I'm just playing computer games right now. Он занимался музыкой, он играл на фортепиано. Он занимался танцами. В школе мы ставили музыкальные сказки, где он исполнял главные роли. Зрители всегда восхищались его артистичностью. Их детская группа выступала, Данила очень выделялся. When we were growing up, it wasn't good time financially for our family, but my grandma helped us to get our first computer in 1997, early, uh, comparing with other kids in Ukraine. We got visitors every day. The friends of my older brother used to come to visit us, and we were playing games. And Daniel, every time, look what we do. <laughs> every time we try to push him away, but he come back <laughs> and look again. It was all in greater than у моих детей. 
During all his conscious life, we were trying to stop him from playing. We were hiding our computer cord everywhere in our apartment, but he always found it. Мне всегда хотелось его больше понять, даже его вот то увлечение мне хотелось больше понять, и ну были на то причины. Я не буду о них сейчас говорить. Ну думаю, где-то в душе он, наверное, немножко жалеет, что он. She stopped preventing him from playing Dota. She gave Dandy the freedom to choose what is the best for him in his life. Tournaments back then were like really low prizes and a lot of prize money didn't even get to the players. There's been a lot of scams with the managers and stuff like that. There were like some rumors that it's gonna be like $50,000 first place and, there, and everyone was going like, nah, it's not gonna be like that. Watch the forums go nuts, guys. Watch the forums go nuts. It is actually confirmed. It is off the frickin' hook. 1.6 million dollar prize pool. That is for the winner. 1 million dollars for winning Dota. Dota, the game I've played for five years now, which I played for fun, for some food money or whatever, you know. Okay, it's actually getting big. It's the largest prize pool of any gaming competition to date. It just felt like the start of something big, like a revolution. You know, we had everything we needed for the game to become big and respected as an eSport. It would kind of like vindicate us. We are not just playing because we are addicted. There's a goal, a motive that we can actually reach out and grab if we are good enough. Asia, professional gamers are treated like rock stars. It's a viable career opportunity. They actually live in gamer houses, so it's set up to be a thing all year long. I think their approach to practice is that it's like a day job. The fan base is immense. It probably is as big as the whole Western audience together, or even more than that. So now you really have to play good. You really have to try hard. It's first place, it's go big or go home. The big teams get big money, but the 9th to 16th place earn nothing, and their salaries are not worth considering. While in sports, you have a salary that you can live off. With pro gaming, I think that's one of the toughest parts is living game to game. It's like living paycheck to paycheck. Like, I have to win. If I don't win, I don't get paid. That's a tough living for anybody. It doesn't matter what you're doing. When your child wants to become a professional gamer, you don't have any history to look back on, like other sports. I don't know anybody who's made a living at gaming. So it's kind of a scary thing when you see your kid putting their whole life into gaming and not college and, and not the traditional things. What if nothing comes of it? Regarding the age, I think yes. Like 25, 26 years, that's, it's, it's absolutely maximum for esports. Because 27, 28, 29, 30, your reaction time is lowering and you can click so much, you know, <laughs> as the kids do. A lot of financial responsibilities are laid upon me right now, require me to be successful in something or have a job. So it's pretty critical that I am successful if I want to keep, continue like the gaming career. Your, your, your view, what is your plan? That is more important. I mean, we speak ourselves, we speak our frank opinion. 
It's your choice now. What do you want in life that is more important? If I'm going to win this tournament, my first thought would be I will call my, my ex-girlfriend. Things got a bit bad between us, and but right now, for me, it's, if I'm going to win this tournament, my first thought would be that I will call her, I will tell her about it, and I will want to share this moment with her. Yeah. This tournament is going to be a moment in every gamer's life. Everything that you've been doing is building up and it's gonna happen over one week. And then it's not one week anymore, it's one game. And then it's not that one game, it's that one moment in the game. And then that one moment in the game is where it's gonna finish. And how's it gonna finish? Are you gonna be holding up a trophy? Or are you gonna be the most disappointed that you've ever been? Tuesday, so one day before the event, we already have a lot of setup. We have a lot of computers set up right here. Whole booth construction pretty much finished. So five players per side. They can see each other through the glass. They can't hear each other. This booth is soundproofed up. Plus, and the whole setup here, if you look from above, looks exactly like a Dota map. And this is the mid. This is where it all happens. A few teams have already arrived this morning. We had a lot of teams from Singapore. We had China. We had Malaysia coming in and Russia and uh, tomorrow it's finally happening. We are here live at Gamescom 2011 in beautiful Cologne. It's the first day of the event. We've got some of the world's best teams here in Dota. And they're handing out a tournament prize of $1.6 million. It is massive here. A tournament of $1.6 million. That's the future of gaming. This is awesome. It's the first time we're gonna see teams of this caliber assembled in one location. These guys are not just nameless faces. They're the best in the world. The bunch of teams we have here, there's a few teams that have individual skill that's unbelievable. And then there's a big group of other teams that have good individual skill, not top notch, but who win through good strategy and team play. Fear is a great player, for example, but he is not comparable to good players in Asia. And that's nothing against Fear, because he's still an excellent player, but he's not them. Over in Asia, they take gaming so much more seriously. Just to give you an example, the Korean football team were playing in the World Cup. To motivate the Korean football team to play better, they brought in StarCraft Brood War professional gamers into the locker room before they went out so that they got to meet what were their heroes. In China, Dota is to the people there what StarCraft is to Korea. Um, it's televised. The girls no, like their boyfriends to be Dota players. <laughs> After a game, where they're walking around, you can see fans running up to them, asking them to sign on their shirts. It's like a real sport. The third time I was in China, I was playing with fans for two days. They made a video of me, filming me uh, walking in some mountains, and I had to say some sentences and stuff. On the other side of the world. And I was like, yeah. In Dota, there's always a new mountain to climb, stuff like this, you know, and uh, <laughs> I walked up and down and these stairs and started running and lifting some weights and just to compare this with Dota, like some metaphor stuff. I will say that China teams are all great. Every player in the team is strong. You don't recognize China players as a player. You just recognize them as a whole team. You just fear the whole team. The Chinese teams that have come to this competition are scaring the shit out of everyone else. We had two of the top Chinese teams in our group. 
Online Kingdom has not been regarded as one of the favorites to win it. In fact, or considered bottom four or just bottom eight for sure. This is our first time on land together. The team together has only been around for around four to five months, so it's a relatively new team. And Pie Cat, our newest addition, playing carry for us, he's only been on the team for three weeks now, actually. We were really nervous going against the Chinese team, especially the top Chinese teams. There's going to be players that choke handling this kind of pressure at such a young age. 1437, like, this is the first time he's, like, ever been on land. It's not easy. Like, this is a million dollar tournament, first time he's been on land. This stage, this prize money, this prestige, this is real competition. We tried to keep our cool together and we just played our game. Hyped. Everyone was surprised they were doing so good, even we couldn't believe it. Online Kingdom dominating right now. After the match against Tai Lu, everyone was very excited, you know. We just beat one of the teams that were actually favored to win the competition, so everyone's like spirits were like, oh, we may be able to actually do this, you know. Beating the Chinese teams, uh, some people just, you know, for fun, they started, okay, hey, it's okay, Nirvana, and they're the China Slayers. A few little bit surprises that we had yesterday, quite a few upsets. OK, Nirvana International managing to beat two Chinese teams in a row, beating our Taidu and um, OK, Nirvana CN. They're currently on roll now, and um, Chinese teams are not unbeatable. But um, on the other hand, uh, E-Home are just proving that they have been the strongest out of the four Chinese teams, having a clean 3-0 record. They are the favorites to win the whole tournament. So they come in with the confidence that they've won seven championships already. It's always a little bit national pride at stake. So of course they want to prove that Chinese Zelda is a little bit above the rest. Ehome is one of the oldest Chinese Dota organizations. They've always been at the top of competitive gaming. Most memorable doing ESWC 2010. Before ESWC 2010, I thought like, yeah, okay, the Chinese, they're probably pretty good, but like, how good can they be? And then we played Ehome, who, who won the tournament without losing a single match. Like, they just crushed everything. Ehome finished the year as the best team in history of Dota. They were just on a totally different level. Like, they had their manager sitting behind them. He was making their call. He was running around with this little black book. And they were the first team I heard of who did that. The Ehome manager copying down the draft, doing the prep work. He was their coach. There was a great interview that was done and it lined up all the top European captains who attended, and the topic was E-Home. If you want to have it be good, you don't need to invite Chinese teams because they are too strong. <laughs> <laughs> so E-Home won. Uh, what do you think of the, of the Chinese guys? I never felt this outplayed in my entire life. It's, uh, it's unbelievable how good they are. Like their timing, their discipline. They're really in control of the game, the whole game, and they keep this control all the time. This is really crazy to see, actually. It's because we are in any international tournament, 所有的国外战队的经理和队员看到我们的时候，全体都会大声地喊：“一号！”你知道那是一个多么壮观的场面吗？这是一个故事，是一个封锁，就是大家当大家看到一号的时候，他们就自然而然地认为王者要入场。During this trip to the international, it's actually the same period as my exam periods, so. I treated it as a sacrifice that I, have to make, that I have to make for the team and for myself. And I find that when it comes to pursuing your passions, it's really up to you to decide if it's worth the, worth the sacrifice. When they're having an exam, they not allow him to leave the school. So I told him already, I say, mind yourself. Setting out a career in gaming is risky. It's very risky. 
because the examinations actually clash with the competition and missing the exams without a proper explanation, the school didn't recognize the Dota competition as a valid reason. It's, a, it's kind of breaking school rules. And the school is very determined to stop him from pursuing his uh, chance of going for this uh, contest. So I, I think uh, this has created a big stress for the family. Yeah. If this mother very headache, you know. Ayo. It's quite difficult for us to pull him out right now, I think. You know, he's so adamant about it. So that's why when he told me he's going to August, I said, then how about your school exam? What are you going to do? I think my mother, she was kind of at her limits, telling me about how much gaming has been weighing me down. That was really the talk where I really opened my heart and I shared with her my passion for the game and how much I believe that. My team actually has the a potential to win, to be the best in the world. So we are stopping at nothing less than first. This is how I try to put it across to my mom. By giving up so much to come here, I have absolute confidence in my team that we will win. All right, the drop is underway. Eher, they will select up their heroes. Sites will start selecting theirs. Looking now at both the teams, it looks like Eher, they're fairly relaxed while Scythe, you know they're eager. They're all gathering around HYHY to pick. If you have a losing draft, you will lose again. This is what I think of Dota. So it's really a lot on, on, on drafting. Drafting is where two captains will select what they want to play with what heroes are selected and what heroes are taken in. You can select five heroes out of a pool of over a hundred and you can also remove four of those heroes. So four heroes you think your opponent will want to use, you can remove. Before any game, any match, uh, we will decide our band and picks according to which team we are fighting. Usually we would come up with a very impromptu strategy to try and fight their threat. Yeah, you really have to spend a lot of time thinking of the draft. The draft actually decides a lot of the game itself. He home they're a team with so much experience. They already know the way they want to roll this one out. The only thing that's really going to make it or break it for them is if they can get their execution right. In that particular matchup, we felt that uh, we needed something that could instill the fear in them. And Tiny looks to be the last pick up here from Scythe. Bit of an interesting pick up there by Scythe. It's going to start to change around their lanes completely now. With Tiny, it is good as a surprise strat. If another team doesn't realize where he fits into the whole lineup, then you can really throw the opposition off balance. He's moving away, but no, HY, HY, he'll just turn around and just pop Selena. I want to point out right now that Eho, they are not noobs. This is just Scythe playing an amazing game. When you have such a huge audience and you know that everyone is at home watching the game, they have their hopes pinned on you and I feel that there's so much at, at stake. And they should be able to clean it up right now. Tiny, he's going to toss, he's going to launch, and he definitely gets the kill. We've got 357 getting nailed out there. Nate just Bradford going to get the last hit in as well. This the entire team down for Ehome. This is GG. This is now a double rack for at least. And Ehome, they're going to disconnect. We have our first winner's bracket finalist. Scythe will advance. Ehome will drop down into the loser's bracket. And Scythe will now finish up this game. Yeah, the one million is... Yeah, one million. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> it's gonna make my time playing, on, playing this game all worth it. Didn't think smoking would do me any good. Yeah. <laughs> when did you start smoking? Uh, two years back. Two years back. Uh, uh, bad move. <laughs> on bad terms. Seems like she's she's moved on already. Back then when she was playing the game, it felt like we had something to something we shared. Yeah. yeah but right now it's like. Yeah. I think she's. I think she's following this event, but probably this event is big. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I will get to make a phone call. Yeah. <clears throat> Finally, I'll have something I'm proud of to tell her about. Finally.
When you played the Russians and the Ukrainians, they were just the unpredictable teams. I had no idea what the Russians were thinking. That was their best weapon. No, we're having fun. We're trying to relax. We're trying to scare our opponent. Mind games, mind games. <laughs> I turn off my brain in the way of being scary of someone. One of the things I really admire about him is how he hasn't really had an easy life, but he's always so upbeat. He's always so cheerful. When he first came on the Dota scene, he looked like a 12-year-old boy. Arrow was just like, who is this kid? There's no way you could take this guy seriously. And then he would destroy you in games. Как-то я видела, показали даже где-то в интернете, как он работает с клавиатурой. И это действительно завораживает. Я думаю, что Данилу, может быть, и где-то пригодилась его игра на фортепиано. He can make really good moves. His moves, I think, are unique and they might win you the game. But he wants to rely completely on skill. He wants like an enemy against him and he wants to kill him through skill, nothing more. He wants to win the game. His disadvantage is, is that he doesn't have patience. He wants to make those moves. He can get a little bit too silly in games. He will try new and different things. He will overextend in team fights because he believes he can get the kill. And his impatience can go too far and he might lose the game for us. Oh, Fury, he's gonna go in. This should be the first blood. They got the sprout on Sanjing as well. There's probably gonna be a double. Denny Dalti, it hits. Dandy, Dandy, no, no, he thought he cannot be. This is Dandy through and through. Starts with a hex, goes to Cold Snap. He locks him in place. Weaver, really close to death, manages to time lapse back out again. Dandy will TP back to safety. So GG being called by IG Navi. They will take the game. Our winners bracket finalists are going to be Navi versus Scythe. Most teams that you see that have the most fan bases are full nationality. Our team is all spread out across the world. He does have it a little harder than us because he doesn't really have this human support uh, that we do. The hardest thing I had to really deal with in my life is just trying to convince my family about my gaming career. It's really, really difficult, especially when you start out slow, but you know there's a future for something and you put a lot of time in and they keep telling you, like, you should probably get a real job. Well, I was born in the Los Angeles district in Lancaster, California. I lived there with uh, my dad and my mom. Around two years old, my dad left my mom. He didn't really say anything. He just kind of, he just packed up and left. She's had to raise us both while going to law school at the same time. It wasn't real easy as far as just got out of law school, didn't have a job, had huge student loans to pay back. This job came up and so we moved here on our own, so I've been raising them by myself ever since. So this is a photo album that I made for Clinton for as he was growing up. I put pictures in it as we went along. My sons were both really active into sports and they wanted to do a lot, so I had to limit them. They could choose two per season. That was maximum for me being able to get them to practice and go watch their games, and that was tough and Clinton sent him on Santa's lap, his brother Santa. <laughs> my brother is more angry at my father for leaving than I am. He thinks about him, he gets upset. Compared to me, it's just, I just block him out and you know, pretend it doesn't exist. Oh, Clinton already starting uh, video games here. <laughs>
He was sitting at his house, you know, playing Dota, doing it competitively, you know, had a sponsor team and everything like that. Uh, but I think that's when it probably started getting on his, his mom's nerves. I have a crazy sleeping schedule. I'm on a European team, so sometimes I have to stay up at pretty ridiculous hours or wake up at ridiculous hours. So the standard day for me is not so standard. All the nights he'd be up except that the dog would be up too with him and that would keep her awake most of the nights and this is kind of where the tension got pretty high. You know, this, this went on for years and it came to the point where I just told him, I said, you know what, you just need to go somewhere else. So I got kicked out of my house because of my gaming career basically. When Clinton first moved in here, he was looking for a desk and there wasn't anything in the room and I have a lot of stuff that we're getting ready to take to the dump. And Clinton went out there and, and he came back in with this green desk and he goes, it's perfect. So I didn't have a monitor, so I went to my friend and he had a spare CRT monitor, so I got that. And then obviously I have two books here to hunch that up so I can actually see the monitor. So it's kind of a ghetto setup. Even when I go to competitions, I, was like, I don't think I play like any differently on the nice setups compared to this one. Clinton's like the, the Rocky Balboa of, of Dota. Um, he's the he's definitely one of the first big U.S. players, and I, honestly, I didn't even even know he was that big. In the North American scene, there weren't many good American players known back then. Everybody respected Fear. A lot of the people I knew, they quit the game. You know, they moved on, stuff like that, but I stuck with it, so I ended up being like one of the oldest players. With all of his years of experience and all of his constant commitment to the game, he's really shown that he doesn't give up. Growing up without my father, I think in the end, like not having someone there to teach me, you know, the guy side and having a father to help you up, I think that has actually probably made me like the person I am today. You know, I just make sure everything is running smoothly on the team. I kind of play like the father figure, I guess. As a captain, I guess he felt he had that responsibility as well. And he was like pretty much my mentor. He did tell me one time, like, if you need someone to talk to, you know, he would be here. So I kind of see him as a, a Dota brother. I've never had an ego like thinking I'm better than anyone else. I'm always there willing to help people who are new to the scene. And that's always been kind of my role in the game. I just helping players get up for the most part. Fear actually broke me into the scene, you know? It's very hard to get yourself out there. I mean, back then, I was kind of like a fanboy of him, you know, watching his games and whatnot, and he gave me a shot to play at a high level. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Fear. I can guarantee you that. Going into the match, we were all thinking that MFC didn't do so well earlier, but... If we would lost that game, we wouldn't win anything, so it was a high-risk game. 36 minutes in, almost a 7,000 gold advantage in favor of MUFC. Towards the end of the game, we made a couple mistakes that put two heroes on the sideline for us, and they had all five still up and decided that they were going to go for a throne. We were really close to losing our throne. It's below 20% HP. And Online Kingdom, they are so close to the point of getting eliminated from this tournament. We just needed to do something. I ran in first, and then they all went on me instead of focusing on the throne, which was good. Again by Silver Cross, Fear. He's trying to retreat. He turns into a pig. How the hell is he still alive? Back. We made this huge comeback where we killed all of the heroes, you know, started pushing. Silver Cross is down! Morphling, he's out of this! The top racks will go! There is no way now that MUFC can come back, but it will be Online Kingdom eliminating MUFC! What an incredible... Our whole team just went crazy. Leading Online Kingdom to do the impossible! I've never seen anything like that! And stay tuned, we'll be back here for more exciting gameplay coming up.
the Skitche. They are 2008 ESWC winners. One of the best Asian teams, but we don't afraid them. You're gonna fight them. I don't know about my teammates, but I don't feel scary at all. I feel like I want to crash my enemy. That's how I feel. That's it. Welcome to the winner's bracket final, where Scythe goes up against Na'Vi. The winner gets a slot in the grand final. The crowd's watching for them, and their draft was very scary. We were like, caught off by surprise. But we were like, we gotta win this, man. We gotta win this and show them who's boss. The Scythe have managed to take all the best players from Singapore and put them in their lineup. You know, Na'Vi, they look cool, calm and collective. They know exactly what they've got to do. It all comes down to gameplay right now. And i got to say, like, Na'Vi's lineup, it is not unbeatable. So now they're going to look at the initiation and possible kill. HY is going to get caught. Now, bottom lane held in place. Sven's done. No, Sven will go down here. Line of Heaven, he's helping out, but then he gets the last hit. Na'Vi and dominating this final. Now, Na'Vi, they're, they're going to take the chance here. They're going to go in for the GG, and GG is the call from h White first. Na'Vi are already off their computers. They're not even sticking around. They've got the GG. Na'Vi are into the grand finals and will play for the $1 million. Scythe go down. They will face the winner of the first We have just lost our confidence match against Na'Vi. It was actually quite a blow to us. The game was really the turning point for me. Because you know, I actually learned that in life, you, you can only trust like, yourself, actually. Not in the sense that you can't trust people, but, yeah, like I said, the ones who will never let you down is yourself. Within the gaming world, I'd like to be, be the first place. You know, it's like I'm following him behind my mother's footsteps, basically. She worked really hard to get where she is. And I kind of want to be the same way. I want to work hard for whatever I do. For me, I mean, I've never really had a dad, so if I had any questions about anything, the person that I was most comfortable talking to was my mom. She definitely had the most influence on my life. When she comes home from work, she's always, you know, anxious to bring up the subject, how she, you know, won a big case. And I'm always proud of her when she wins these big cases because I know it means a lot to her. I mean, in the back of my head, I'm always like, if I do well and if I win this tournament, you know, I'll finally be able to prove, like, I'm getting something out of this. We're looking now over towards the grid, and whoever wins this match will be facing up against Ehome, but whoever will lose it is going to be eliminated already. Like, Ehome, they're looking really strong. We right had the now. stronger lake in here, it's the better team fight. Just all we had to do was just control the pushes. Kingdom, that's clear! The stun on Xander, they'll splash as well. They're gonna claim a win runner, will they? Yes, they do. It's 2 0 for Online Kingdom. Moscow 5, not the start they wanted. But Online Kingdom having a. We were so close to winning until some few mistakes that occurred in the late game. They might go now. The first four heroes standing right next to each other. The timing is wrong. It looks a little. There's communication in arms because we're an international team, so. I think full nationality teams have an advantage over most teams. Almost there! Big try! Fears in trouble though! He shackles and Lacoste is in! He casts his ulti as well! And it just fell apart from there. They just slowly beat us down. Eventually they just broke our base and took all, every single one of our axes. Right place. This is really hurting Online Kingdom. They've lost three. Enigma pops. The team is wiped for Online Kingdom. The base will be taken. And Moscow 5 will now play E-Home and advance in the tournament. Now, Online Kingdom, they are out. So much promise. It didn't happen in the end for fear in the rest of Online Kingdom. And it will be Moscow 5 that will advance. I think everybody on the team was very emotional. I could only imagine how he was feeling. Some people take it more personally and they give everything to win. It was very satisfying knowing that we reached that top eight, but he had better expectations for our team and we'd come a long way and it's all thanks to fear. If you don't uh, go as far as as you thought you were going to be. 
I guess you, you end up in tears or something. All of us are really disappointed, but I guess that's just how it goes. When I get back home, I need to make a big decision on my life, like just the benefits of playing Dota professionally, how much I can make from it, and how much time I really need to put in it to be 100%. So the only way I would ever do that is if I move in with my teammates and have like a training house with them, so I know for sure we're all dedicated. They think things happen for a reason, and when things happen, you just do your best and continue going forward with it. I mean, deep down inside, I know this career is going to work out for me in the end. Fan军的争夺者，而我们中国战队呢，我也是非常的希望，也相信能从我们的败者组杀回来。目前来看的话，很可能前三强将会是由Navi、Saif以及我们中国战队的一支，我个人是希望是一红。Turning into a pig, they need to get this kill. The stun, the weave awaits. It's a little piglet. Ed is dead. Slide out of A2R. He's almost dead. Burrow strike. Epi center. 3 5 7. It's a double kill by the Weaver. He hurt. They'll lose FCP as well. Moscow 5. Casualties of war. Holy hell. 在中国，这个游戏已经是相当的职业化。他们有一个成绩上的压力。他们如果不拿中国战队，如果不拿到成绩的话，或者输给国外队的话，国人会给他们质疑，也会造成很多。就是形成中国打世界的局面。这本来就是我的本职工作，如果拿冠军的话是应该的。我告诉他们，如果你要来这里就是来拿冠军的，我每天都会跟他们说，我们一定要做到这件事，我们必须要做到这件事。我们的传统是除了冠军奖杯以外，剩下奖杯都是通过冠军大赛，他们直接冲进场。Support teeping in FCB gets the first time. Misery over commits on the top lane. Misery wants the tower, the PLT's had enough of this. FCB! What a time for a frog! Misery will pop! But they see us in the game, they think they can't win us. Now I'm going to be This is where my dad works. For as long as I remember, man, he's doing the logistics for the company here. So it involves um, the shipping of the containers from one place to another. When I was younger, he used to work like 15 to 16 hours a day. He's pretty much given up on everything else in his life. It's always made it clear to me that you know I should focus on my life, focus on my studies, so as to not follow in his footsteps. He doesn't want me to, you know, be slogging as hard as he is right now. But you know, the chance to be the best in the world at, at something, you don't get it much in life. My son said, uh, he working at this, what, Dota. We spend a lot of time, uh, he get nothing. Uh, for me, it's very disappointing. Never go to school, he want to break computer. Then morning, sleep. Then computer, until the next day morning, then he sleep. The whole day, at least 15 hours at computer there. He's alive. My, my, <laughs> my son life is like that. For me, I hope my son to study more. Don't let me never study. When I'm young, I also say with Han Yong. Always spend a lot of time to play. The other night, I also regret why I don't study. But now, hope my son continue to study education better than me. This is my hope. Lah. Well, 
right try, I think it was a great choice, a brilliant choice because he was confident that we could won. It's an opportunity that you shouldn't miss out. So, get ready, sign in, log in, play around, test a little bit and then join the lobby in about four minutes. Okay. It's a once in a lifetime chance. If you miss it, you might be gone forever, you might not experience it again. And we have a rematch. Ehome versus Side. Ehome facing up against a team who forced them into the lower bracket. Forced the them psychological pressure is immense, especially upon the drafter, because he is the one who is in the end responsible for the team's picks. Shadow Fiend, alrighty then, it's HYHY is SF. Everyone knows how to counter a Shadow Fiend. It's a very bold pick up here by Scythe. The fact that if Scythe win the early game, they're going to gain so much momentum, but if they don't, then Ehome will basically roll themselves into the grand final. HY, HY, BKB is going to wear off pretty soon and Benham has a great strike! HY oh, dead! Do that, do that tree again now! Again again! And he wants XY, catches up to him and he brings him down! Why do that tree again now? Why do you come out? Do that tree again! Do that tree again! He cogs! Joey, he wants to leave, but there's just no mana! He gets it! If he can pop off an ulti like that, he doesn't really have to reveal himself to his opponent. He can really just initiate. Oh, there he goes! HY HY does manage to pop off an ult, but Earthshaker is already dead. A2O really gunning for HY HY. They're already three gone. Made that four. There's a double kill for the anti mage and the head for the tower right now. There is a GG. Good game called by HY HY. Side have had enough now. E home will advance. The Chinese home. First placing was very important to me. And to add on to that, my studies was also at the same time affected by everything. So everything was related. When everything comes falling down at the same time, it's, it's quite hard to handle. Things are all changed. So you got to like plan your life again, all over again. I've learned a lot. You got to realize your, your flaws. That's the toughest part, I feel. I don't do things as well alone. So if you try to do everything by yourself, it's not going to be possible, you know. I'm actually a believer of fate, and I told myself that um, winning isn't, isn't necessary because there are so many more things in life. How you take care of the people you love. I think that was, that's a very big thing, you know. That's a very important thing. It's, it's the most important thing ever. Okay. Okay. I just woke up, it's not fair. My haircut still crazy, no? But I don't care. Okay, I have everything with me. Let's go. We are now at the final day of the International Dota 2 Championships. It is Na'Vi. We have a one game advantage sitting very, very sweetly in the grand final. Who will get a shot at the one million dollars? Na'Vi was running the same strategy the whole time and no one seemed to be able to counter it. Na'Vi loves pushing from minute 10 and trying to end the game at minute 15. Those strategies are very sensitive because if you fail even once, it can become a very difficult game for you. Ehome has been known for how well they defend their base. So if there was a team that could stop Na'Vi's push, it would be Ehome. 
And let's get this game underway. The players will start to pick up their heroes with one million dollars at stake. Navi will need to win two. Ehome will need to win three. Running a very, very old school strategy with three core heroes. Ehome managed to survive Navi's onslaught early. It's all on Dandy, PLT, TP'd himself in, Denny on the retreat, back out to the tower, will he get himself away, X, yes there it is, last hit, 3-5-7, the Venomancer brings down Dendi in the middle. Every time you see Dendi perform, he's always playing very well, and he usually doesn't lose his lanes. So Dendi, like his impatience is that Chinese teams, they are patient, they look out for the fact that you might cross the line, and they will take you and kill you and win the game through those situations. Trouble in the middle lane again. There's already the Gush 3.7 PLT. Everyone is right on top of Denny. He's in the wrong place. The way Navi played, they really gamble, basically. Then he's really been ganged, just shut down. And there's a single kill to his name as well. Now Navi going to assault inside the base. Watch our style. Tier 3 down, VS swap. Arsenal's in the wrong place. Do them as well. Big MV spray popping up. Rabbit report on the line of heaven. Unable to affect E Hone. Pudge will go down. You want to be initiated on Navi. They need to fall back. They take your little upsets and they just win the game through those mistakes. GG from Navi. E Hone is celebrating right now inside the booth. Navi cannot believe it. They've dominated this tournament up till now when E-Home takes the first match so convincingly. That was the first loss of Na'Vi during the whole tournament. They went undefeated until the grand final. We're going to have a 15 minute break and be right back here soon. Na'Vi, they need to compose themselves. E-Home, well, they just need to be awesome. What a play by them. Any lose actually make me pretty sad. We try to put family pictures here. This is our mom and dad, and I think that this one is our favorite, actually. My childhood, we lived full life, and dad was working for all our life. But he helped us every time in every problem. I just ask him, and he'll do everything for me, for Katya, for Daniel as well. But uh, Daniels and Faro was like friends. Действительно, мой муж был просто фанатичным рыбаком. Даниил был, ну, я бы сказала, можно сказать, его самым лучшим учеником по рыбалке. Даниил имеет э, такое же терпение и такую же выдержку как и его папа. Он мог часами сидеть и смотреть на поплавок, который даже не пытался дергаться. They can sit with no speaking for hours and just enjoy each other's company. They understood each other without words. One day I was going fishing, but dad never showed up. And when I came home, it's already super late. He was feeling bad. He went to the hospital. And he decided to stay for a few weeks, you know, so we watch everything, stuff like this. And uh, cancer. It was a very big shock for me because he was very thin. I cannot understand this is my father. We were sure it must be okay, but uh, it's a very short time. I was really sad and was crying a lot. I was sad, sad about I couldn't say him many times how much I love him. No, после того как папа не стало, он не ездил на рыбалку ни разу, ни разу. То есть, пока это все осталось в прошлом. Actually, I spend more time on your computer because I could not think about it. It's like a distractor. It was like a start time, actually. The push to 
way more. And that's maybe one of the reasons why I'm playing now. Maybe I wouldn't play at all. The relationship of Daniel and my mom grew stronger these days. They support each other uh, and they are very good friends. I think that this is very important for Daniel. You know, five years ago, I wouldn't care about many things. Now, I'm thinking about it a lot. Something knock you down, you need to learn to get up. So, I'm trying to research this. <laughs> to learn to get up. This is the most important moment in my life because everything I worked on wasn't useful. And now I have a chance to win this tournament for my family. So we have currently Eo and Navi playing in the grand finals. Navi just lost one game versus Eo, and it's 1 1. So both teams have to win two matches in order to win the $1 million. Because our picks look completely different. We were like passive and stuff. People thought like we lost the first game, we're gonna lose the second game. We were maybe a little bit demoralized. We really needed to change to a different pick. We were missing something. Ah, Enigma, we took it just so that we would have a strong team fight on the 5 on 5. It was like last hero left and I never played it before. And then we're like, Dendi, you go. And he's like, guys, I've never played it. But I can do it. So we took the risk of taking him and risking maybe playing him badly. So it looks like down on that bottom lane, Dendi will be taking the Enigma. It is going to be a very, very rough lane. Navi lost the game. They're playing something now that they're not as confident with. Ehome figured out Navi, figured out how to play against it. And so I'm going to stick to my word and I'm going to say Ehome will win it. It was incredibly ballsy from Dendi to do that on the verge of winning the million dollars for your team. 这个行为真的是非常非常的，呃，愚蠢。这等于是一个，嗯，可以说等于是一个自杀性自杀性的行为。Dandy really now caught out. He's in trouble. Rockets are flying. FCB long way in on the tower. Land is done. Tinker just lays him to death. It will cost FCB his life. That we made some little mistakes. We played a really semi type of like turtle strategy, really passive, really passive. We don't play like that. Poppy and Denny just want to retreat back out. A2R! What a vision! BLT is there! Echo Slam as well! Beautiful play there by Ehome. But I know if I die, I will be the winner. Well, I don't know if I die, I die not for nothing. X in the middle lane, forced! Rocket laser! And there's enough! Denny just going down in the middle lane. Rocket laser! 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 He was scared of losing, that's why he was so patient and he did everything right. Their strategy is kind of similar to how Ihom won. Navi defeated them late game, and I think this really shattered Ihom's confidence. And GG is the call from Ihom. Navi, they take the game, and they are only one win short of taking home one million dollars. But the question really is, can Ihom... We hardly won the second game. Chinese teams generally are feared for the late game potential. So we hit the point now, the gloves come off. Ehome, they will master their knowledge, their experience, their calls up against Na'Vi. And Puck will be the last hero for Na'Vi. The nimble hero, they're already. Once again, a lot of aggressive heroes for them. Na'Vi, Line of Heaven, playing as the Beastmaster again, with Denny playing as the Puck this time. If Na'Vi wins this, they win the whole tournament. This clash of the titans right here is something we will not want to miss. X will come in closer. They will be able to get that kill. Doom now on Danny. Pulled in by X. The entire E-Home team turns on him. Lich will go down. 
FCB's on the run. The Vorshoff up the chase of him. Might be enough. Needs some more damage. Oh! Edge long jumps in. Danny Orbing up on the high ground on FCB. Puts off the wall of the ribs. Orbing up to get the kill. He's on the retreat. Yes, it is. Danny with the last right click. E home now. They're going to rotate themselves down. Nafi already in the pit. They're going to try and bring down Roshan. All five. Dandy! He's going to jump out. He goes for the dream call. He gets him. He gets E home. Holds him in the middle lane. Nafi already on the way out. Then he just went in and demolished them. Now they're on top of the tier three tower. They're gonna bring it down. Yes, it does. It goes down. Ehome, they're drawing desperately to deep. And the Navi, the onslaught will continue. The mid tower is already being pushed. The tier four tower is gonna go down. And running in right now is the rest of Navi. They're running forward to one million dollars. And they will get it. The GG is the call from Ehome. Navi have just champions there's moments of esports that are landmark and this is one of them in cologne and navi the winners you guys have just made history i was jumping on the sofa and screaming like crazy girl because I was the happiest girl in the world and my brother just won one million dollars. <laughs> I think in 10 years time, all the gamers which we currently have showing themselves, they're going to be the guys that we will look back at and say, this was the beginning, this is where it all started. These are the guys that worked hard and they took the risk, they proved themselves and they forwarded the entire industry to the point where we could have a kickstart. We could show the world what we do, and then who knows how big we can get at that point. We've come far already. When more and more people support it, and it becomes more and more normal, it's going to go from a niche to becoming accepted in society. I think in 15 years, the sports would be bigger than football, than basketball, than everything. That kid who you thought played too many video games is potentially going to be on a path where he's earning 250000 a year salary. He's flying the world. He's going to be endorsed. Gaming's the biggest entertainment industry in the world. So if you're a star, you are potentially one of the biggest stars in the world. So if, if that, like everything else with computers, grows exponentially or whatever, then five or 10 years could be a big step, actually. Changing mindsets is never easy, so it's going to take a while when the gamers now become parents. We will be supportive of our kids playing, and I think that's really when everything will boom. Competition held in Germany. She's definitely proud of me. I mean, just had her camera out. Like, why are you taking a photo of the television? <laughs> and I know she, she's really smart. She's a lawyer, so. But in the end, I think she'll be more understanding and be willing to support me more. So it worked out. We were disappointed with our loss, and yeah, it's a mixture of both. We were happy and sad that we got third. Regardless of my emotions, I felt like she was the one I wanted to share them with. And it got pretty clear only then that I had to get her back. After the, the tournament, I actually went back to look for her and talk things out, and we have actually began dating again. Yeah, and things are actually going great. Yeah, <laughs> I love her, you know. <laughs> she played a huge role. A very huge part in in the me today. One week ago, it was 3,000 followers. I was happy, and then it's boom, 8,000 followers. It's not about the number. 
even if one or two I'm fine. So you don't need to show numbers actually, I think. My father, I think, didn't have time to understand what Dandy is doing. We lost him too early. And if now he can see Dandy, I'm sure that he's proud of his son.